All right. How's everybody doing today? Happy Travel Tuesday to everybody. Kimberly and I are back uh, with a bracing newness, still talking about a little bit of travel or packing tips for everyone. As everyone knows, we do these beautiful retreats, transformative retreats to get people to move from where they're stuck to where they want to be. And we just begin to think about what are some of the things that make it a little less hectic or a little bit easier for you. And, you know, um, Kimberly celebrates her birthday, October, I'm November, then you have all these holidays and, you know, kids out of school or travel or breaks or whatever the gatherings might be. And so today we're talking about packing little things. And so what that might look like or some of the ways that we use our things, uh, how we pack some of the smaller things. Um, I have found that when I'm unpacking, it's the little things that I'm like, where is that thing? Like, where is the USB thing? Where are the stud earrings that go in my ear? Where are these particular things? And so all of the things that we might use. Um, for me, especially on my hair journey and the clips and things that I need and rubber bands that are really kind of microscopic, if you will, I've learned to kind of put them in a bag and then put them in my shoes. So if I'm packing sneakers or something like that, um, I know when I put my foot in my shoe, something's going to bother that hat. I'm going to remember exactly where that is. Um, I roll certain things up. Sometimes I even pack my socks inside of my shoes so that they don't take up additional space in other places. But using the inside of like closed toe shoes is a good way to do that. You can put stuff inside of socks, things in Ziploc bags, um, roll it up in something else if you need to. And I've also used my shoes for breakable items. So when I run out of like my cosmetic bags and I still need to pack that toner that's in a bottle or that expensive perfume that I'm like, I want to take it, but I don't want to break it. <laughs> um, wrapping it up in some socks and then putting it inside of my sneakers gives it that extra cushion from anything else really um, pushing it. That's one way. We're all packing shoes. Don't use that space. Um, the other thing that I have used in the past, um, are contact lens, lens cases. So I don't have contact lenses anymore. Um, but I have these cases that I've had around for some time and being able to just put things in there, especially like my stud earrings. Um, sometimes, uh, if I need an extra thing of medicine, I put it in there and just have it in that particular type thing. It's small enough, I can put it in my purse, I can put it in those pockets that we talked about for our jackets, I can put it in my carry-on bag, um, but I can have those very important little things with me um, and they're secured and not going anywhere. And then I'm, if you haven't had a contact lens case, most of them screw on, so it's not the kind that's gonna just pop open. Um, and so, that's a way I've secured those things. How about you, Kimberly? What are some ways you've secured some small items? Well, I, the the contact lens, I just thought about, you could even put, I've seen people put like small amounts of um, lotion or little things that are that they don't have to use a lot of, that it becomes nice ways in which you know you can do that. Um, as far as my little, little things are concerned, I think for me, I've, I've always found like little bags, Ziploc, like smaller bags, and then I put them in, a a bigger bag like I'm always kind of like if I have a jewelry bag and thinking of of a jewelry bag in specifically um I when I got my uh one that I had for the travel cords they sent me you know one of those like oh we're going to give you something and so this was a, a jewelry bag now Serena actually gave me a night one that I like a little bit better because it's not so big like I don't have this I'm never travel I'm not one of those people that changes my jewelry out that much so this is a little excessive for me but it's nice because you can you know snap your necklaces on here and they don't slide around or do anything you can put bracelets in and rings here. So I usually would have like little, little teeny plastic bags. A lot of times, you know, when you get the buttons that come off of shirts and they had those like little plastic bags, I would get rid of the button. Most of the time I'm like, I don't keep the buttons. You never know which button it is after two years and the button falls off. You're like, I don't know which one that was. So I, but I get the the little plastic bags and I would use those things and then put them in another type of, of bag. So, mm -hmm. and 
I love the fact that you can do that. But the other piece is that sometimes you can use straws um, to secure your jewelry as well, where if you had a necklace, you could thread it through and you can cut a plastic one. Of course, I don't have a plastic one. This one's stainless steel, but my kids drank all, used all my plastic straws. I didn't realize it until today. So <laughs> gotta love when they don't tell you, ma, I went through whatever. So, um, but you just slide it through and then you'll attach it just like it stays there. And then that way, it's on something and you can put these things in another bag as well. And they don't get all knotted up and twisted and you can't, you know, that takes forever trying to undo it, especially if you put a few of them together. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and so that comes very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Another way I've seen straws used and I don't have uh, plastic straws. My, my kids are trying to make me go completely green so I have some of those metal straws you have I have a pipe cleaner which kind of serves as the same purpose so if you think about putting like a ring on here um, and it loops in and then you can just take your um, pipe cleaner or straw and you can secure it by doing whatever you want to do you can tie it up you can cut it you can bend it but so it doesn't come off and then you can do the same thing put the jewelry in something else another thing but you have it all together and you're not wondering where did it go or where did it slide to and what happened to my little precious thing that I thought yeah. I was traveling with. Exactly. And that's frustrating because, I mean, we've all been there where all of a sudden you're just searching for one little thing. I remember one of our Embracing Newness retreats. I was losing my mind. Serena knows it was like a key, the key to the actual room that was, that was a, you know, in another country, they didn't have the key card. So it was an actual key. And I found it later because I had put it in this wonderful uh, one that I had for my cords. And I didn't realize that I had stuck it in there at one point in time, but it's that space where you want to secure. So when it it was, had been a pipe cleaner, because that was just a little silver key on this little tiny, you know, thing that they had, I didn't see it the same way, but if my, my ring, imagine a ring or something, if you have it around something bigger, it stands out more. So that's what, those are those things that keep you from losing your mind as to where, where did it go? The only other thing, oh, yep, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. So it makes, makes it the visual a little bit better for you traveling and you don't have these uh, panic moments or thoughts that you've lost your wedding band or your whatever it is that your grandmother's ring that they get, that she gave you that you wanted to take on your trip. Now, Serena, I'm going to ask you this. Have you ever been traveling and, um, you get to your, (laughs) to the, the uh, baggage claim area and you smell your perfume or you smell you and you know, it's your stuff. Your bag smells like 20 times and you just are like something shattered. Something is, is, or opened or busted (laughs) or. Yes. Yes. And and so (laughs) in that space, there are a couple of things that you can do. One of the things that I learned um, is you can take cling wrap and put it over the top of whatever it is. If it's a mouthwash, if it's a, uh, and it doesn't have one of those really like child lock kind of things uh, or, um, you know, your toner, whatever it is, you can put it over there and then screw the top on. And that's great. Although sometimes as we all know, cling wrap can get punctured as well. So what is it that you do, Serena, to kind of heighten those things in your life? Listen, lessons learned, right? So I I put the cling wrap and put the top back on, um, screw it on, but then I also put it in a Ziploc bag so that even if it does um, bust, get exposed, whatever the thing is, leak, Mm -hmm. um, I still can go in my Ziploc bag and use the thing or try to save the thing a bit more, um, which is also how I learned the shoe technique. Um, <laughs> when I'm trying to tell you, you're just like, it's not going to take up any more space, but it has a lot more cushion. Um, just thinking about the ways to protect those things. And one other thing I do, I don't know if you do it, Kimberly, is I always take extra Ziploc bags with me for coming back, whether it's because something messed up, because I bought something that needs to now go in another Ziploc bag. But um, that's just a trick that doesn't take up any room in your bag. You can pack whatever size you need of some extra Ziplocs to make your trip on the way back easier as well. Absolutely. I I do that. And I also pack um, the bags that you get at the grocery store, a three, three or four of those, because you never know if your sneakers get ruined or something happens and you need to tie it up. You don't want to even put it in your packing square that they had, like, you know, they give you the shoe bags, like you showed a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, that you, you don't even want to 
put something that's so muddy and, and disgusting there. So anytime you can have some extra bags, that is a, a definite for sure. So anything else, any other tips or tricks that you have for individuals before we leave today with our packing of little things? I don't think so in little things. I just kind of think, you know, there are a couple of things I've learned over a lifetime to, to keep on me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always keep an extra pair of clothes on me when I'm traveling. Yes. I always keep my medication on me and I've mm -hmm. seen it where people have packed their meds and the bag doesn't come in or it's delayed. And those are small items that you really could bring with you, at least a day's worth or two days worth, whatever that might be. And then um, just thinking about what's precious to you and can you carry it on your person so that you don't have to check it. Um, those those are my things I'm always thinking about. Do I have to check this or can I keep this a little bit closer to me? I do that definitely with jewelry, especially something that's precious that my mother gave me or something that I have that I know cannot be replaced. That always is on my person. It does. It will never get checked. So thinking about those things is definitely uh, a must um, when you're traveling. Because I think I, I know I have had things taken out of my bag, unfortunately. Um, and so if you've ever had that experience, you do know. And I think, like you said, that extra change of clothes, because if your bag doesn't arrive and you're, I always say when we go to, like when Serena and I travel to our, our destinations and most of the time they're, they're tropical or you're going to have a, you know, a, a, a pool and the area in which you want to, you want to have a suit, you're always bringing a swimsuit. You always make sure you have some pajamas, you got an extra pair of clothes because you want to at least enjoy your first day. Most of the time your luggage will arrive the next day, but it's making sure that on your person you have something like that. Cause if you've been there, you know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Certainly. We want you to come with us. Like we want you to definitely come with us on a trip in some way, shape or form. Um, if you go to www.embracingnewness.com, uh, you will see the trips that we have for 2024. And we are so excited about our trips. Um, we really want you to travel with us. But if those trips don't work for you or your schedule, what else can be done, Serena? Absolutely. So Kimberly and I both serve as uh, certified coaches and uh, we are able to help you with private uh, retreats should you want to do something uh, solo as a couple or with your with your folks. Uh, we also do corporate retreats. Uh, we have talked about, uh, we've done things both domestic and internationally for people to put those things together. So we're interested in what you want. And we are always curating exactly um, what you're looking for. So we take it very seriously. What would you like to happen? What would you like to feel? How would you like to be so that we can um, make this space be whatever it is that you need it to be in this time. So if the planned travel doesn't work for you, but you want uh, to use our services, we'd be delighted to have a conversation. On our website, you can just fill out an interest form and one of us will be with you briefly. So we're excited about all that 2024 has to offer and all that we're bringing in 2024. And so we hope to see you soon. Yes, we hope that this has been uh, helpful for you. This is our last in our travel series on things to pack and what to do. And we hope that you've enjoyed it. So go enjoy this holiday season. All right, peace and blessings. Have a great one.